today, uh, and, and it's all about uh, the management of our lives. It's about administration, uh, the, way, uh, uh, the way we take care of what God has given to us. Okay, I'm starting now. Be well assured, sisters and brothers, that God has given you a precious gift when we say that God gives us life. I've heard the prayers over and over again this morning, and I, I've heard us talking, talking about how God saw fit to give us another day. I've, I've heard the thanksgiving forward about how it is that God gives us new life every day. But make, be ye well assured that God expects us to be good stewards. That's the church word, to be good stewards. Our church man, our, our good managers of the life that God has given to us. Now, I know you thinking you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't chase women, and you don't chase men, so you think that you are managing your life well. And while that may be true, I would suggest to you that it goes further than that. For God expect much, expects much more out of his children than to keep some rules. I'm going to say that again. God expects much more of us than to keep some rules. Fact of the matter is, God says, I've given you life that you might have it and that more abundantly. And most of the time we think that it means that, that Jesus is just going to wave a magic wand and give us everything we want. But I came to tell you today that you play a role in living a fulfilled life. If you're not satisfied with where you are and what's going on in your life, it may not be that God is not blessing you. It may be that you are not that you are not taking full opportunity of the blessings that God has given to you. I'm going to say that one again. It may not be that God is not still God in your life. It may be, sister and brother, that you are not taking full opportunity of all that God is giving or is doing in your life. Come on and walk with me. And I think by the time we finish this conversation today, and believe me, I don't plan to go any higher than this because I really want you to get this. It may be that by the time we finish this conversation today, somebody will have a clearer understanding and perhaps a tighter grip on how to manage the life that God has given to you. I thank God for our sister that read Luke chapter 12 and verses 41 through 48 for us th today. But I want you to go back and mark your Bible and go back and read the paragraph or the conversation before the conversation that we enter for it is in that conversation that Jesus is talking to his disciples and the crowd around them uh, about things uh, related to the end time. Now, if I were trying to impress you and let you know that I went to seminary, I would say that's about eschatology. But since that's just since it's just us talking, I would go on and tell you that Jesus is talking about what's going to happen in the end. Jesus is assuring the believers that he is going to the father but at the appointed time he is coming back now they were looking forward to him going uh, forward to uh, to the fact that he is that he was going to the cross through the grave and to the right hand of the father but you and I we look back sisters and brothers and we know that the crucifixion has already taken place come on and walk with me we know that the crucifixion has already taken place and we also understand that the resurrection has occurred and we know that Jesus is right now seated at the right hand of the Father. He is ascended into the heavens. But I am afraid that those of us uh, who are saved and sanctified in the Lord uh, usually cut that conversation off right there. But I need to remind somebody because the Lord is leading me to that he is coming back. I am assured that we cut off the conversation right there, not by what we say with our mouths, uh, but what, by what we do with our lives. I just look around and I, I don't have to look into your life. Uh, I can look at my own life and say, Errol, you must have forgotten that Jesus is coming back. If you really believed and understood and adhered to the fact that he said, uh, I'm coming back, you wouldn't do some of the things that you're doing. The watchman's job was also to look out over the horizon 
to see the hand of God. They looked out over the horizon to see when God was chasing their enemies away. And it was there, while the, while the army was out fighting, the watchman looked out. And when they saw that the army was winning, they reported back to the people who were still in the city or in the camp, God is giving us the victory. Hence, the people of God were encouraged and, and, and thought to themselves, we can keep going a little further. It was the watchman's job to look out to see the hand of God so the people could respond to God properly. You don't, you don't complain to God when God is giving you the victory. You don't wail and roll over on the floor when God has forgiven your sins. So the watchman looked out to see, oh, I see God moving now. And they report back and say, God is doing some great things for us. And the people of God responded with praise and worship. I know somebody's already ahead of me, so let me say what I have to say so we can move on. It's your job, watch man or watch woman, to look out over the horizon of your own life. And when you see God doing great and mighty things, even if you have to report back to yourself, Report back to yourself and say, self, you ought to give God praise right now because I see some doors opening on the horizon. Self, you ought to take a little moment uh, and bow down before the living God because God is doing great and mighty things in your life. Self, you can stop begging God for that one because I see God doing what you asked him. Now, Let's set the record straight. Sometimes God will allow you to see in the spirit what your natural eyes can't see. Anybody ever been there before? Uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, the world, in the world, they call that intuition. But those who are connected to the Holy Ghost know to say God has opened my eyes God has revealed to me the spirit said to me that's why sometimes the spirit will say you can put your hands down now and stop fighting because I've already won this fight for you right yeah, but in the in the natural you can't see it but in the spirit you know all right it's time to chill out now y'all with me in here is this making sense to anybody so, so the watchman looks for trouble, but the watchman also looks for God's hand. Can I keep going? Uh, and the word said, and Jesus, and Jesus says, uh, live a life of urgency or be sure that you are watchful uh, so that you can see what's coming. Now, in all of this talk about God doing great things and mighty things, in all of this talk, uh, some of us must be asking, well, how long? Right? Am I the only one in here that is prayed, that's still praying for some stuff? Still expecting God to do some things that started way back in the 1990s? Anybody with me in here? Let, let me bless you. Let me bless you. Uh, I, know, I know it's trite and probably a little bit corny, but I think you're going to get it and it's going to bless you. Uh, uh, just because you've been delayed does not mean that you've been denied. Just because you've been, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I wish I could say it a little more deeper and use bigger words, but, but I just gotta tell it to you like it is. Just because you've been delayed does not mean that you've been denied. In fact, I would suggest to you that delayed manifestation of God's word says to us then we really have to be on guard look at the gentleman look at look at the example in our text it says because the master or Jesus the coming Jesus was delayed somebody in the crowd because you know it's always somebody in the crowd somebody somebody in the crowd became lazy they began to fight with the men and the women they began to fight with the men and the women, eating up all the food, drinking up all the drink until they were drunk. See, y'all trying to play holy like you don't understand that kind of language, eating up and drinking up. <laughs> and the record says when they least expected it, 
That's when the master showed up. 